Okay, let's keep going here. So let's take a look at the result sets from the right side. This is those that aren't issued. So it looks like most of everything is current or in grace period. So clearly current dominates our data set. So keep that in mind as we get to uh, uh, evaluate this later on. So also notice here uh, that took care of, wow, over or almost 4,000 of the rows in the most recent 20,000. So uh, a lot of those loans are brand new. So it's, I'm glad we got rid of those. All right, let's, um, let's keep going. So, uh, oh yeah, let me pull this back up. There's a couple other problems we have with our data here. So let's scroll through and let me show them to you here. Um, let's see, right here, okay. These are two fields that come off of everyone's credit report. Months since last delinquency and months since last record. That means a public record like a bankruptcy. Over here we have another field similar to this, months since last major derogatory. So these are all fields that indicate a number, an integer of the number of months since a bad thing happened. So here the theory would be that a larger number here would lead to a greater likelihood of being current because it means it's been longer since they've had problems paying their bills. So they've probably got a better job, they're a bit older, they're making more money, they're more reliable with the paying their bills now. So here a higher number is a better score or, or is positively, positively related to current. The problem is we have all these missing fields and if they're missing, they're gonna be ignored if we tried to, the, the entire row will be ignored if we include these, any of these columns. Well, that kind of stinks because we have anyone who's blank, it simply means that they don't have any late, uh, any delinquencies or bankruptcies or major derogatories in the last how long? Ever? Well, not exactly. The way credit reports work is they save everything over the last seven years. So that means that anyone who uh, is blank, they could have been late before, but it's been at least seven years or more. Well, I don't want to lose them. That's important to differentiate between those and these that do have a late payment or a, or a public record. So what can I do? Well, um, I would argue, well, you have a few choices. Uh, I would argue that maybe your best option is to replace every blank with the number 84 because 84 is seven years. Now, yeah, if I put 84 for everyone, that's not true because some of them have never had late payment. But for all intents and purposes, someone who hasn't had late payment for seven years, they're probably going to behave when it comes to getting a, a lending club loan the same as someone who's never had a late payment. So really, there's not a problem theoretically with just substituting the number 84 for everyone who has missing data. Now that's arguable and you could come up with uh, other reasoning for that, but it gives me an opportunity to simply show you how to use a clean missing data pill. So let's pull this up. Clean missing data. All right. Remember, make sure we pull the right side of split data in because that's the data that doesn't have issued in it. Um, so over here, uh, grab the columns that we want to clean. Now, uh, by default, it's going to pull everything in. Now, I don't, I don't actually want to do this for everything. I don't. I know I only have missing data on those three fields. So let's get rid of everything, and then pull those back in. Now, I'm not sure yet if I'm actually going to keep these fields anyway because I don't know if they do me any good in terms of uh, their coefficients for prediction. But let's go ahead and clean them now. Notice what I don't have yet in my model is a select columns pill yet. I'm intentionally going to go through and do all my cleaning because uh, I don't know for sure which columns I want to keep. So we'll save that one uh, until next. Anyway, back to clean missing data. So we've picked the fields we want to clean. Um, now let's go to cleaning mode. So there's lots of cool options here. And I know I've reviewed these in another video before. In the past, we used to either do, we used to say either remove the entire row, remove the entire column, um, or more likely replace with the mean of all values in the column or the median or mode of all values in that column. Now, Microsoft, and this is common, uh, this isn't just a Microsoft thing, but they've added two other good options that are better than any of those. Replace using probabilistic PCA in mice. So uh, what this will do um, is either one of these, is just two different techniques for predicting the value that should go in that empty column. So what it'll do is use, if I say using mice, it will use all the values that aren't missing to create a prediction for what value should go in the missing cell. So if I didn't have a theory to explain what value should go in those blanks, 
I would use either a place using mice or a probabilistic PCA. I'd try them both out and see which one gives me the best R squared or accuracy score in the end. But I do have a theory. I talked about it where anybody who's blank, that means that they haven't had a, a, a late payment in seven years or more. So since I already know what needs to go in there, I'm simply going to do replace using custom or substitute custom substitution value. And I put 84 right there. Now, one more thing. What does this missing value ratio refer to, minimum and maximum? So I have three columns I want to replace missing data with. This says, okay, well, uh, across those three columns, uh, you may decide, let me give you a hypothetical scenario. Let's say I left all the columns in and I didn't just put those three in here. This would say, all right, well, uh, don't do a replacement unless, let's say I put in 0.5. That would mean unless there's at least 50% of the data existing, or no more than uh, uh, than 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 fifty percent missing, then I'm comfortable with replacing using mice or uh, probabilistic PCA. But uh, in this case, I want to go ahead and replace with my custom substitution value of eighty-four, whether one of those fields is missing or all three of those fields is missing. So the percentage is based out of the the fields that are selected here under the select columns. So I'm just going to leave that as it was and. Uh, run my clean missing data. It should be pretty quick because we're only down to 16,000 records. Um, but basically that's it. All right, here we go. Cleaned data set. Let's take a look. All right, scroll across and we can see. There we go. 84 is where all my zeros, zeros are. That's it for uh, clean missing data.